Part of being a gamer is having a humongous backlog full of games we just haven't got around to playing, mainly thanks to the plethora of cells that go on on a day-to-day -day basis. It's really hard to buckle down and play all of these older games, burning a hole in your back catalog as these new games keep pumping out time in and time out. Well, I wanted to take the time out of my day to give a little bit of respect to my games that I've been putting on the backlog for so long and finally cover them and not only just play them but have some fun with a critical mind and review them as well. Welcome to Tales of the Backlog Episode 2, where previously we looked at a 90 FPS and inspired game called Dusk, which was a fun time, we're going to be taking a huge leap forward into the modern era of gaming by the developers over at Remedy, the creators of such hits as Max Payne 1 and 2, and of course their Alan Wake franchise. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and talk about a game that threw me for a loop both figuratively and literally, Control. Let's kick things off with the story. You play as the main character, Jesse, who's been exploring the streets of New York City looking for a mysterious building that relates to the FBC, or the Federal Bureau of Control. Upon exploring, you come across this director who seems to be dead, and you see this guy commit suicide right in front of your eyes. You pick up this service weapon and instantly start taking control of the operation, working as the new director. Thrust into your new position, you have to take down an evil enemy called the Hiss, work with a variety of agents, and make your way through this ever-shaping and ever-changing building to uncover the secrets of what's going on and potentially find your lost brother. So without spoiling too much, I just want to say that the story was most definitely gripping, interesting, and had a wonderful way of having this simple setup completely blow your expectations out the water with plenty of twists and turns and further delving into a lot of the science behind the game's lore. The amount of codex entries and papers and stuff you'll find scattered about the world is a fun read and catching up on all the intricate backstories of this concrete jungle that is the Federal Bureau of Control is absolutely immersive and definitely had me hooked into the game's scenery and world more than I was leading on to believe what was going to be inside of the game. There's a lot of lore here and I completely 100% cannot emphasize enough how great the multimedia usage was in the game, mixing in these game engine cutscenes with these live action projectors showing off the scientists discussing different aspects of lore and how the building came around and all sorts of weird things showing what goes on in the FBC is absolutely intriguing and I really liked how it kind of grounds you in its world and really hooks you in and pulls you in and immerses you in more ways than I was expecting. Overall the story was something really interesting and if you're a fan of sci-fi and that twin peak style of storytelling and even a little bit of mental illness stuff, you're definitely going to have a good time playing this game's story, and I recommend it for that aspect alone. So before we talk about the performance and graphical style and all that good stuff, I want to circle back really quickly and talk about the gameplay before I fully delve into that, as there's a little bit less I want to say about the gameplay, more so than the graphical style, performance, etc, etc. So let's get straight into it, and I just have to say, this game is great. It is legitimately one of the most fun third person shooters I've played in a really long time. Combat sections are just emphatic. Being able to quickly move between cover, ducking between walls and literally seeing the walls deteriorate right before your very eyes as the hiss are chipping away at your cover. Being able to unlock all these future power ups from levitation to telekinetic powers where you can pick stuff up and chuck it at them with the launch ability, building an actual shield around yourself and then shooting the debris out later through skill upgrade trees. All of it feels really, really good. And with that being said, the movement in this game is so fluid. Every single action I take just feels right. And being able to upgrade your weapons with crafting parts and stuff is also very, very good. There's a little bit of things I, I don't like, to be honest. Uh, one of the things I kind of a gripe with is the kind of pseudo RPG elements. They're not the worst. I actually don't mind the skill tree in this game. I think the skill tree is really good for once in the third person Metroidvania, which is kind of hard to do. Recently, they've been kind of tacked on, but here it doesn't feel too tacked on. Like it's something you can upgrade if you want. And if you're not 
too big of a fan and only want to upgrade a few things, you can do that too. So I, I do like how the game lets you really just take control. Like you're you're gonna die the same amount of time as regardless, depending on how you build your tree. Like if you really want a defense build, you could go for it. If you really want to max out your powers, you can go for it. Um, the the gear here is okay for the most part. Uh, you're just typical stat increases. It feels a little bit arbitrary. I never really felt that difference until I got to the tier four, tier three, and of course the tier five abilities. But the tier two and ones, I wasn't feeling any of it. It said like 42% launch damage. I'm still doing the same amount of damage I felt as when I'm just taking out enemies. That also could just be because of the skill tree boost and stuff. But again, I just didn't really feel that much of an influence in terms of the gear score, at least when it came to the personal modifications. Now, when it came to the gun modifications, I definitely felt it. Uh, being able to have a lower recharge rate on certain weapons or a faster recharge rate, uh, taking up more ammo slots, all that good stuff, definitely felt the gun upgrades here. However, I just felt the personal modifications were a little bit extra uh, or probably could have been fleshed out a little bit differently uh, in terms of just being what feels like arbitrary numbers. I'm not sure if that's just a fault of the gameplay or just RPG elements or just me being in my looter shooter mind kind of thing. Overall, it's nothing to penalize the game for, just something that you might want to watch out for. Like the gear just didn't feel that game impacting. H however, with that being said, don't get me wrong, gunplay is absolutely just phenomenal. Being able to quickly dash around cover, moving from place to place, seeing particle effects blow behind you as you dash into literal office tables and desk and blowing concrete chunks and rip literally ripping it off of the side of your own cover and launching it into enemies is so much fun. And later unlocking the levitation skill and stuff and being able to fly around on some kind of weird on rail shooter type thing where you're constantly uh, moving around more of a free roam fight kind of thing kind of like Star Fox all range mode is the best way to put it uh, and dash around at high speeds and pick stuff up and take chunks of the world off of things and shoot them at the hiss and then later take like the hisses dead corpse and then launch it into the other enemies and keep this chain going is super fun later leveling up your abilities like getting a rock shield to kind of protect you and later have those rocks launch out at bad guys all super good stuff and having all of this kind of work in tangent with each other and using all of your abilities to the fullest is where the game just gets downright doom levels of insane to me like i haven't felt this way in a third person shooter like on a power trip like this since vanquish in all honesty like this is this is the western equivalent to that like it really does do an incredible job of making me feel like wow i'm literally learning my powers along with jesse like i'm learning how to use the telekinesis i'm learning how to use the levitation and dodge and tangent with each other i really felt like i was learning how to use the type of moves she was using in the game and further increasing those skills and really putting them to the test kind of helped combat encounters feel that much more fluid and fun so huge shout outs to the development team in terms of gameplay i just had so much fun taking away at the enemies and and taking them apart it just felt great uh, the enemy variety is also pretty good here too. You got your typical grunt-like enemies that are gonna swarm you, take you down, and do everything they can to either run up on you and kick you or you know use their guns from afar that kind of thing you have their sniper like enemies who are sniping at you from afar and do a huge chunk of damage and completely can annihilate your health bar at times which is very scary you have your armored tank enemies shooting grenade launchers and mini guns at you they're a little bit tougher to take down they always got a shield on them you have a health regenerator enemy that constantly regenerates the health of enemies you get the gist these flying weird wraith type guys that just they kind of float around and shoot concrete at you. They're, they're kind of hard to take out. The armored enemies that spin around with concrete have similar teleconnected powers to what you have. Always keep your eye out for them. They're pretty hard to take down. And of course, you have these really interesting uh, shadow fog enemies. I don't really remember their name, but they, they kind of creep around and they hiss at you and do a bunch of damage and they just can annihilate your health bar it's ridiculous and you have to like watch the chromatic effects in the fog to find out where they're going to be take them down with a, a couple of blasts and do what you can do to you know knock them out of there real quick so they don't take your health bar from zero to 100 real fast or i guess 100 to zero in this case the enemies are really well designed um i found them to be a little bit 
too easy towards the end just because of how overpowered I was, but it was also a, a nice reminder to keep yourself in check when the harder enemies kind of came out, like the guys that were like floating on chairs and the rates and that kind of thing. That's when you really had to like make sure you keep yourself in check because all that stuff being thrown at you constantly is when the game gets really, really difficult and being able to maneuver yourself through those combat environments is where, you know, most of the bulk of the fun comes from. Now, again, you do get on a little bit of a power trip. There's times where I just felt utterly overpowered and I was just knocking enemies out constantly in like two to three hits because of all the gear and stuff I acquired throughout the game. However, uh, the game still does a good job of keeping you in check. Uh, damage is damage at the end of the day. You are going to take a huge chunk of it uh, when you're fighting those tougher enemies and the game I feel like does a really good job difficulty balancing. Definitely died a handful of times. Not a shame to admit it at all. It just boiled down to me not being careful with where I'm moving, uh, getting a little too overzealous in my movement and that kind of ordeal so very good stuff in the combat department gameplay was absolutely great a lot of interesting puzzles and uh, really well designed areas too uh, kind of zelda-esque being able to uh look at certain key codes and go to different whiteboards and figure out like which key cards go to which computer that was a really interesting puzzle there's a lot of good stuff here and the game did a very phenomenal job of having a good balance of this really interesting puzzle like gameplay figuring out which you know things work to open a room or open a door get a security clearance card to keep exploring and also did a very good job of having combat be extremely fun always fast paced always keep you all the tips of your toes or being able to slow it down to your speed keeping yourself on the ground uh, moving a lot uh, building cover to yourself to have a more portable uh, kind of pick away at the enemy's fill so there's a lot of good stuff here and I just want to say hats off to Remedy for making another phenomenal third person combat uh, game and I really can't wait to see more from these developers and what they're going to do in the future with hopefully the control license because I, I really liked what I played here so with gameplay out of the way, everything is just firing off on all cylinders, right? And that's where we hit our first snag. Uh, the performance is kind of hit or miss on every platform minus PC. Uh, the console performance is just bad on the base uh, stations, the Xbox original, uh, like Xbox One S and those kind of consoles, and the PlayStation 4 have their issues, and surprisingly enough, the PS4 Pro seems to be a little bit worse at points because of the, I guess, 4K frame rate issues they're kind of hit there's a digital foundry video on it um yes there has been some patches that kind of smooth things out a little bit but it is still a really hard game to play on the base platforms there's just a lot of issues going on there a, a lot of unfortunate frame rate dips uh, things where the game just it dips to the low 10s to 15s and that is unplayable for a game like this you can't play with a frame rate that poor it's it's just impossible you cannot do it man i'm gonna just tell you to nix it and wait for a ps5 release or if you're waiting for those consoles or just get it on the uh, ps4 pro or one of the higher end consoles at the moment because i don't know man these the way it just looks and and plays right now it's not worth it uh it, it just unfortunately isn't however if you're on pc it's definitely worth the pickup and uh, there's not too many performance issues from what i've heard over there but on the x and uh, PS4 Pro seems to be a pretty good pickup. Another thing you should know, by the way, is my game crashed on me actually once, which really sucks, and yeah, just keep your eye out for that, okay? Performance talk is done, sorry if that bored you guys, but I really had to, you know, make sure you guys understand that if you're on those base platforms, if you're on those base consoles, because that was a huge issue for me prior to, before I played on the uh, Xbox One X, so keep that in mind if you're going to be playing this game on, uh, on a base platform. Well, performance is out of the way, so let's talk about what we actually come here for presentation, the graphics and the music and all that good stuff, and I can say confidently that the graphics, as we already discussed, are absolutely gorgeous. It is a beautiful game game yeah the color scheme is a little bit on the drab side but that's kind of the point of the game you know you're in this weird uh kind of scientific uh, department of government stuff like it's gonna be boring i'm not expecting super vibrant colors the game has a pretty striking art style nonetheless a lot of callbacks to those 60s 70s tv shows of all those x Files style things those twin peaks style things so that's always a plus there's a lot of cool multimedia stuff as we talked about earlier with them combining these projectors constantly telling you uh, all this weird stuff going on in the FBC, you're trying to figure it out, and there's points where the lighting just blows my mind, picking up these projectors that are displaying these MP4s or whatever format they're using in real time, and moving them around and them physically projecting the image, just like how a projector would in real life, like that is 
downright beautiful like that takes a lot of processing power that takes a lot of post-processing work a lot of time and they did it and being able to see those real-time reflections and things like that it blew my mind i'm not gonna lie the destructible environments were also a exquisite touch in my opinion i haven't seen destructible environments this gorgeous since red fraction gorilla so huge hats off over to remedy for that i'm a huge sucker for destructible environments so anytime i see games have that i just my mind just explodes because that no games do that anymore you know i really miss the bad company one in two days where you could like destroy and level whole buildings not quite that level but it comes close it really does feel like when you start a combat encounter in a room it goes from being this pretty gorgeous you know concrete jungle to absolutely apocalyptic with papers strewn about and desk broken and just things picked up and flown everywhere with these bodies hanging lifelessly in the air or on the floor just twitching or whatever maybe as you decimate the hiss and everything in your path it's great and again like i said working in the uh, kind of environmental storytelling with you know opening up new places for you to explore as you unlock levitation uh being able to launch objects to uh power things on and things of that nature it's all super good stuff so hands down really great graphics here across the board uh, character models just look phenomenal um, everything about the game all the mind trippy sequences look great and it genuinely feels like I was playing through a really good FX TV show or a very strong like Hollywood film like it takes a lot to have a game honestly feel like a movie and still play like a video game like that is absolutely incredible in my opinion so huge shout outs to remedy for that and that's gonna do it do i recommend control is the question and i can confidently say heck yeah dude i really am mad at myself for missing this one last year is becoming one of my favorite third person shooters of all time no joke i loved the character interactions here i really enjoyed the storylines all the codex entries to read up on and i'm not gonna lie to you guys the reason why this took a little bit longer to come out as i started this about a week ago is because i was spending a lot of time going through some side quests reading up on some codex entries and just doing what I can to further immerse myself in this world. Control is an absolutely phenomenal game, and I highly recommend you play it if you're a fan of sci-fi, uh, FX shows, Hollywood, anything of that nature. If you're a fan of those obscure storytelling methods and having your mind kind of messed with when you're playing these types of games, you actually owe it to yourself to check out a game this creative and this fun, and I really just want to give my hats off to the developers who put a lot of hard work into this game, obviously. So pick up Control. It's definitely worth the price of admission. And with that being said, that's going to do it for episode 2 of Tell Us From The Backlog. My question for you guys is, what games are you looking forward to in your backlog? That's right, let's all experience this together. How about you guys go to your backlog right now, pick up a game, comment down below which game you chose out, and let's discuss it. Maybe you might find one that I've already played and we could talk about it down in the comments below, or you can join my Discord down in the description and comment section where we can further talk about gaming, anime, and all things of that nature. I'm Young Falcon signing out. Thank you all so much for watching my content. It really does mean a lot to me, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace.